This is David Kurtz for TPM Media. We're joined today by uh, Robert Reich, the former Labor Secretary in the uh, Clinton administration and now a professor at UC Berkeley. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Well, thank you, David. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. I wanted to, to jump right in and uh, ask you to give us your take on this stimulus package that is currently pending before the Senate. As we talk, it's already come through the House. The Senate is now taking it up this week. So I wanted to get first your reaction to the package that came through the House. Secondly, what you think the Senate's likely to do with it. And thirdly, and, and this is what I'd really like to focus on, is what you would like to see ideally in a stimulus package, both in terms of size of the spending involved as well as the, the particular uh, expenditures therein. Okay, well, let me uh, try to deal with all of your questions. Uh, first of all, the stimulus package that went through the House is pretty good. I mean, I'd give it uh, maybe not an A, but I'd give it an A minus. Uh, about a third of it is tax cuts. Uh, I'll come back to that in a moment. About a third of it is unemployment insurance expansion, food stamp expansion, aid to state and local governments. And by the way, that second third that I just mentioned uh, is probably the most direct way of getting money back in circulation into people's pockets uh, so that they can turn around and spend it. Uh, and then the last third we might call public investment, and that is uh, roads and bridges and repairs and uh, all sorts of infrastructure type things, including uh, the energy grid and broadband and so forth. Now, here's the trade-off with public investment, and this is where the Senate is going to be debating. Uh, you do get a twofer in the sense that that investment generates new jobs and also builds growth for the future. Uh, if you repair roads, if you build new roads, if you build public transportation systems, if you invested in uh, education, uh, in teacher salaries, smaller classrooms, uh, research and development, all kinds of things that uh, spur growth. And we know they spur growth because there are a lot of studies showing uh, that human resource spending and transportation spending and uh, all sorts of spending that are really public investments like these uh, do uh, enable the economy to grow faster in the future. Uh, the problem is that many of these uh, can't happen right away. Uh, some of them, in fact, take years to get underway. Uh, and there is the trade-off. Some of the most important public investments don't generate a lot of jobs immediately because preparation is needed to make sure that they are being done well. Um, now, I've looked at the stimulus plan that came through the House. Uh, most of those public investments strike me as hitting that balance pretty well. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Uh, time really is of the essence here. Uh, every week that goes by, more people are unemployed or threatened with unemployment. The economy uh, drops further. Uh, this stimulus package needs to get out there as quickly as possible. Uh, and in my view, even at $820 billion, uh, it is probably too small. I want to take a step back because you've been one of the people over the years who, among progressives, who have questioned and, and looked at the issue of, of what, what is sustainable economic growth, how should we define prosperity and productivity, and, 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 and in other words, measure the economy in a way that more reflects of humanistic values. Um, and and I, I sense that with the collapse that a lot of what the debate is about and, and what people are talking about and focusing on is, you know, it's kind of how do we get things back to where they were before the housing bubble popped, before uh, recession set in, and, and just kind of stabilize things where they were. Do you see this as an opportunity to, to do more than that, to essentially expand how we think of, of economic growth? I, I, I think, David, that this has to be an opportunity to do more than simply get us back on the track we were on before the collapse, uh, because that track was not sustainable. Uh, income inequality and wealth inequality were widening at a breakneck pace. In fact, I think that that kind of inequality uh, is to some extent responsible for consumers not having enough purchasing power once the uh, housing bubble burst and they couldn't get more money out of their homes. Uh, also, we have this big structural problem with the environment, uh, not only global warming, but our dependence on oil. And we have a huge and growing structural problem with our dependence on foreign capital. 
Uh, and the list is actually quite long. If we don't use this as an opportunity uh, to uh, deal with these deeper structural issues, then even when the economy returns to what is perceived to be normal, uh, it really won't be normal. It will be a very, very uh, fragile economy. Uh, the next time there is any kind of a negative uh, happening, a, a kind of a, uh, something that triggers a downturn, the downturn, the downturn is likely to be even worse. Uh, and even the recovery is likely to be very anemic, as we saw in the recovery of the 1990s, one of the most anemic recoveries on record. Uh, I think that because the structural problems are mounting, uh, the economy of the United States and indeed other economies suffering from widening inequality and um, uh, unsustainable uh, energy and environmental policies uh, and many of the other problems we have, uh, those economies are also very fragile. Uh, we have one other structural problem uh, that many other advanced economies don't have and that is that our health care system uh, is so uh, dysfunctional. And here again, unless we use this opportunity to make it more functional, uh, we are just going to find ourselves uh, with a, uh, an overall economy that uh, may be technically back on track, but if we don't really do much about the healthcare dysfunction, uh, that uh, track is going to be uh, filled with potholes and it's going to eventually uh, be so slippery we, we fall off the cliff again. Uh, not to uh, get too metaphoric about it. In other words, uh, there are some structural issues here that are so important, so big, uh, that uh, there really is no get getting back on the old track. We, we certainly appreciate your time. This is uh, David Kurtz with Robert Reich. His latest book is uh, Supercapitalism, and it's just out in paperback. Again, thank you for your time. Well, thank you, David. Bye-bye.